Welcome back to my third GLFL tutorial and in this tutorial I want to talk about texturing with GLFL but because that's a rather short subject I also include the multi-texturing uh, that's, uh, that's kind of a GLFL subject and OpenGL subject uh, as well but because op in OpenGL it doesn't have that much of a strength as in GLFL because whenever you use shaders you have much better control over what's going on in each texture. Okay so here I opened up the last program and actually I made some minor modification to this program First of all, I included the SDL image header file because I included the new texture loading function. Here it is, the load texture function. This is the one which can load any kind of format. Uh, yes, that's pretty much it. So uh, the last modification I did is to uh, change this uh, uh, to this triangle which was here earlier to a quadlateral and actually I assigned texture coordinates to it as well. Uh, and uh, actually one more modification I almost forget is here this is so I just set back the color of this quadlateral to a red color so now if I run the program as you can see here it is here it is it's a red quadlateral okay so let me start uh, the tutorial right now first of all we need obviously an identifier most of the part of vectoring is pretty similar in the OpenGL code like you will do in case of a normal OpenGL program with fixed functionality just there will be a small change in the vertex shader and the fragment shader that all change uh, what it needs to be done in order that the texturing work so my IMG this will be my um, IMG ID and let me load it right here in the uh, init function so my IMG equal to load texture and let's just load the texture called brick.jpg uh, actually uh, uh, by the way I f forget to show you that I downloaded two images into this folder a brick.jpg and a concrete.jpg it's just two images I found at the Google so uh, it will be good for the demonstration it doesn't really matter what image do you have <coughs> Right, so I just load it. Let's actually here before I draw, let's bind it as usual. So gl bind texture and just gl uh, texture underscore 2d and my img. So now I have binded the texture. I can actually enable the gl texture 2d if I want to, but because we are using shader, it's not necessary. But I will just do it right now. So gl enable gl texture underscore 2d. Okay, and actually here it has everything that would be needed in case of a fixed functionality. So in case of a fixed functionality, lo the image is loaded, the texturing is enabled, we binded the texture, we applied the texture coordinate. So in case of a fixed functionality, everything should work right now. But as you can see, there is no change because the fixed functionality has been replaced by shaders. To do the change, we actually will modify this uh, shaders. So we will manually access the pixels of this texture and manually set the color in the shader. Okay, so first of all, I go to the vertex shader and actually I get these coordinates right here. 1.0, 0.0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0 uh, 0.01 and 11. So these are the texture coordinates and I get these in the vertex shader. And I get it here uh, in the vertex shader because these are attribute variable. You can actually use the, attri uh, the same method to give attribute variable like we did earlier with this ATR variable. Uh, by just using gl vertex attrib, uh, you know, the same uh, kind of uh, uh, way. But I will use the built-in attribute variable because there is a built-in attribute variable. For uh, gl vertex 3f, we use the gl underscore vertex built-in uh, uh, attribute variable. For the texture coordinate, we use the gl underscore multi text chord 0. Uh, actually, this is multi. Uh, multi because this is uh, able to load multi uh, so it's able to use with uh, multi texture coordinate I will talk about multi texturing later in this tutorial uh, so this is for the GL texture uh, text chord so this is basically the value and this will contain one zero but actually this is a four dimensional vector so it's containing two value which we are not really interested in okay so let's uh, load it I will create a varying variable so varying and this varying variable have the type vec2. The, it's vec2 because we have a two-dimensional texture, so we have a normal image. And obviously, in a case of a normal image, two uh, number is enough to describe what pixel from that texture do we want. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Obviously, we use two coordinate here as well in the GL text code because we have a two-dimensional image. Later on we may look at uh, cube maps or, uh, or three-dimensional textures which need three variable to define a, vert a, a pixel color. Or if we take a look at one-dimensional texture we need just one floating point value. This is just as simple as that. Okay, so here is a vector 2 and I just call it, what should I call it, text chord, like texture coordinate. Okay, and I just simple assign this uh, building variable, so gl multi text chord 0, to this text chord. So text chord equal to 
uh, GL multitex core, and as I said, it's a four-dimensional vector, and we don't care about the two other dimensions, so just use dot x y to get just the first two value from this uh, multitex core the vector. If you remember, this is basically how we can convert uh, vector four into a vector two, basically, or I could use the constructor as well, so vec two and uh, this should also work this way. So it's just getting the two, uh, two first coordinates. But I will just use this dot x, y, and that's pretty much it. I have this text code. And this text code will be basically use interpolation. So if you don't remember, interpolation basically means for the first vertex and the second vertex, the first vertex x coordinate is 1, the second vertex x coordinate is 0. So it basically will slightly go from 1 to 0, depending on how many frames there are. So for example, if there are te uh, how many pixels there are, I wanted to say. So if there are 10 pixels between in these two vertex, that pretty much mean that the first will be 1.0, then 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, so on, down to uh, 0. So this is what the interpolation is. And then in the fragment shader, we get this interpolated value. So varying back to, and we use the same name, which is text code. Simple enough, we just get this. Okay, and we have the interpolated value. One thing which we have all, uh, which we also have to do in the fragment shader is get the image, because we don't yet know what image do we looking at. So in order to be able to texture, we need to get the image. To get the image, this is a very specific uh, uniform variable, uniform, uni uniform, and the type is actually sampler to D, with capital D. Uh, this type is actually, I haven't talked about this type, uh, it's, it's basically for 2D images. There are the GL sampler 1D and 3D as well, which is one-dimensional and three-dimensional textures. And there are a sampler cube, which is for cube maps. For, so for every single different type of texture, you have a variable type. So for two-dimensional vector, we use the sampler 2D. Okay, and the name could be anything you want. It can be IMG in my case. Right, and here where the magic happens, we will call a function which is a pretty useful function. Without that function, the texturing will be uh, fairly complicated, but this function is actually called texture2d. This is for two-dimensional uh, textures again, so 1d is for one-dimensional, 3d for three-dimensional, and texture cube is for cube maps, which I will talk about later. Okay, and this is the function, and it's waiting for two parameters. One is the IMG. In this case, this is our only IMG uh, image, so let's pass the IMG right here. And the second parameter is the texture coordinate, which is in this text coordinate. Okay, and it will, this function will give back a vector 4 uh, parameter, so just create a vector 4, uh, actually vec4 variable, and I just call it text color, for example, and make it equal to this texture2d function result. And this function will take account whatever you write here as uh, GI text parameter, what is the magnification filter, minification filter, it take account the mip mapping, so on. So it will do everything for you. This is the only thing you have to do. And then apply this result, so the texture coordinate, into the frag color. So the, our color will be whatever this text color. So let me just apply it here. And it was that as simple as that. Okay, so pretty much we are finished. One last thing to do is actually we have to tell OpenGL what image do we want to use. We cannot just use GL bind texture, although in this case it might work because we have only one texture, although I can't guarantee that it would work, but it may it could work. Uh, uh, whatever. So we have to tell what image do we want to use. We can only use whatever image is binded. Obviously, we only binded one image at a time uh, so far because we don't use multi texturing, but we have to use basically the texture unit of uh, uh, so the texture unit which we want to use to define that we use the gl uniform i uh, actually one i to give one integer variable and this one integer variable will be this sampler it it is filled up with an integer variable and actually we have to tell what texture unit do we use we have only one texture unit at the moment, uh, one texture, so we will just pass zero. By the way, you may notice that here is the GL multi-text code zero call. So this zero is stand for that this is the zero texture unit uh, texture coordinate. Uh, later on I will, in this tutorial, I will talk about how you can mu do multi-texturing and do other uh, texture units. Okay, so GL uniform 1i, so get the location. I will actually copy that to save a little bit of time. Somewhere I have a uniform variable, I have a feeling right here. Okay, I, I will just copy this as the first parameter, and IMG is the name, and just pass a 0 to the second parameter. That 0 means that we are using the 0 texture unit. I will talk texture unit in a moment, as I said already a hundred times. And that's pretty much it. If everything goes correctly, then we can compile this program at, at right now. And we can run this program right now, so here I put it, and we can run it. 
and yes there it is it ain't Im indeed loaded this image and it's indeed put it into here so I can move although the texture coordinate seems a little bit screwed up because it's rotated 90 degree I'm, I'm not sure probably I missed up some something in the texture coordinate stuff but anyway the texture is loaded and that's the main thing okay and I think we are ready for the second part of this tutorial which is about multi texturing it's not as complicated as it sounds and uh, let me create another image because obviously if you we mu use multi texturing we have to get have more images so my IMG too by the way multi texturing is a way to send more than one image to the same place although you can have more textures in a project like you have a different texture for the human or you have a different texture for the map you have a different texture for the enemy and so on but we didn't use the textures which are the which multiple so multiple textures in the same object so for example two different textures into the same part of uh, of a cube for example uh, anyway so let's load it and we will see how this is work so img2 and just load the texture which I called concrete.jpg. I hope I didn't mistype that. Let me check that. Concrete.jpg. I think it's okay. Concrete.jpg. So I loaded this IMG2 image, and now the important part comes whenever we bind it. By the way, if I delete this GL enable GL texture 2D and I compile the program and run it, it will run the same because this GL enable GL texture 2D will be actually will only matter in the fixed functionality. We don't care about this uh, GL texture 2D enabling anymore because we are use we are doing it manually. So, by the way, back to the subject. Before you bind the actual texture, you have to tell what texture unit do you want to bind that texture. There are several texture units. You can find out how many texture units there are in your computer with this GL get integer we call and GL max <coughs> texture unit. That's a constant and just pass a pointer to an integer. So let me create an integer i and let me uh, pass the pointer as the second parameter and write out so std c out and write out i okay and if i compile the program right now and run it i can find out how many texture units so how many texture can i apply at the same time to the same mesh so if i run it uh, as you can see currently it is four <coughs> although i'm not sure because earlier i did the same test and it was eight I'm not sure what happened earlier. It's uh, returned with eight. Now it's returned with four. Anyway, uh, I can use four texture unit. We only want to use two, and at least every implementation should uh, uh, use two. So not should use two, but have two at least uh, in texture unit. Okay. So to div uh, to get what texture unit do you want to use, you use the GL active the texture. This is the name of the function, and here you will define what texture do you unit do you want to use. So let me use GL texture 0 this is texture unit 0 obviously and then let me create another one so gl active texture and gl texture 2 uh, 1 this is the second texture unit and let let bind the my image 2 into this texture unit okay that was simple enough we just binded the texture at the first image so the bricks into the texture unit 0 and then i binded the concrete image into the texture unit one okay and here i will have to use another uniform variable so let me create one so gl uniform one i and uh, and i create immediately in the fragment shader another image to create another image you do the same thing as you did uh, in this line so uh, you use uniform uni uniform sampler 2d because it's a 2d image as well and i call it img2 okay and in here in the opengl program let's just fill up the img2 as well with the value one because my concrete image is the text in the texture unit one my brick image at the texture unit zero as you can see and the pretty much that was all the modification you can use this function instead of gl text code the gl multi text code 2f it works exactly the same way as the gl texture core 2f except that its first parameter is what texture unit do you want to apply this so for example gl texture 0 and then the coordinates 1 0 1 1 I said 1 0 so this replaced this gl text core call and again you can do it with gl texture 1 and you can call another another variable so here it is gl texture 1 and uh, yeah that's pretty much how you can do it but 
in GLSL, if these values are, uh, so if the, all the texture coordinates use the same texture value, so texture coordinate value, then we don't have to care about this GL multi-text code call, but we can use this GL texture code and get all of this, the result of this and apply it to all of the texture. You will see what I mean in a moment. So the vertex shader pretty much remain intact, so it's the same. Okay, but in the fragment shader, let me create another, another one of this vector four, and I just call, call it text color two. And here I use the image 2 instead of the image 1. As you can see, I use the text chord right here in the first image and the text chord right here in the second image as well. So it will cause that the texture coordinate is actually the same in case of the all images. If it would not be the same, then I would have to create another varying variable, for example, call it text chord 2. And the text chord 2 will be GL multi text chord 1.xy. And in that case, I will use this GL multi text chord. Uh, uh, function which I shown you previously and use and call it two times for every vertex for the first time you use the text code one uh, text code zero and get that value and then text code one and get that value but most of the time you want to use the texture the same uh, same texture coordinates for every single vertex so you can use this text code right here in every image okay and if I now pass the text color two in here I should get the concrete image so now if I compile this program and run it as you can see, uh, oops, you can't see it, now you can see it. Here it is the concrete image, as you can see, this, uh, this works as well. But let's do something with this, actually multiply them by 0 0.5 for example, and then add the text color uh, times 0 0.5. So what I did here is basically get the concrete image, get half of that concrete image, so multiply by 0 0.5, so every uh, every uh, color will be the half, and add the uh, a brick image, and similarly, I multiply by 0 0.5, so I will divide it basically by 2 if you uh, like that. And if I run the program, as you can see, partially I can see the brick image, and partially I can see the concrete image. So this is basically the multi-texturing that you have multiple image. Of course, you can just use it for texture, you can use it for normal maps and shadow maps and uh, uh, ambient occlusion maps and what else. You can do it uh, a lot of things. So later on I will cover most of this, but this was basically it. So once again, just a quick review, you have to first activate the la texture unit which you want to use and bind your texture to that texture unit. In that case I activated the zero texture unit and b uh, bind the brick texture, the texture unit one, and bind the concrete image. And then with GL uniform variable set the sampler, uh, sampler 2D type to an integer which is representing the texture unit. Zero texture unit for the brick and zero texture, one texture unit is for the concrete image. Then you just simple draw it, you can add these at, as, as your own attribute variable if you don't like to use the built-in attribute variable. Uh, if you use g at the multi text chord 2f call, then uh, Depending on what texture unit do you bind, uh, do you pass as a first parameter, you uh, the you get the zero in here at the end of this built-in attribute variable one for the second, so on. So you can uh, just do that, and uh, I think this should cover it. Later on, we will do much more interesting things with it. So thank you for watching and have a great.